All right, thanks for coming back to the Bigfoot Society podcast. I have the uh, privilege of having uh, UFO Jane with me on the show tonight. And mm-hmm. we, yeah, it's funny. So I got, I got to tell you a funny story, uh, Jane. Is so your Instagram handle is UFO Jane TX, right? Mm-hmm. Literally for a year, I thought your name was UFO Janet X. You're not the only one. <laughs> really? You get that a lot? <laughs> no, okay. All, all right. the time. And I usually, I often won't even correct people because it's yeah. like, because <clears throat> it makes total sense. Like, that's exactly what it looks like, especially for like being into space and UFOs. Mm-hmm. So the X seems to like to make sense <laughs> or something Yeah. Really. with that, like Planet X or something. <laughs> but yeah no 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 worries it happens all the time so do you mind uh sharing um a little bit about who ufo jane is and what it is you do yeah so i i mean i wasn't always ufo jane Mm, (laughs) i wasn't born that way (laughs) but uh (laughs) So in 2012 is when I started doing Texas UFO sightings okay. and just documenting local cases that were happening. Cause I mean, I live in Texas, so they're part of it. Okay. And, and so I had a journalism degree and I enjoyed writing and blogging. I had different blogs and different things I had made YouTube videos about like at the time that I was experimenting with. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but when I found that there were all these sightings that, you know, CNN, Fox News, all these mainstream reporting outlets weren't reporting on, mm. I then kind of discovered my own news beat and then eventually started making YouTube videos. And then that turned into interviews and more entertainment videos as well. And so it okay. kind of just evolved from pretty basic, basic starting point. (laughs) Wow. That's cool. That's cool. So yeah, I, I know you primarily from, uh, Instagram and, um, the crazy adventures of, uh, glurp the alien, which shout out to glurp. If like, you guys don't know what I'm talking Uh about, you need to (laughs) look up glurp the alien because he's, well, I, I mean, I, I don't know too much about glurp, but I could say, uh, should I say, it is awesome or he is awesome or like how should i refer yeah to no that? i think you could definitely say he is awesome okay. and you know you okay. can follow glurp the alien on instagram and so aliens are definitely real because i know one and you know he's around that's true that yes. is true yes so he really likes planet earth though a lot of people say why would you ever come to planet earth it's so gross and disgusting here like i'm sure aliens just <laughs> you know want to like you know roll up their windows and just like speed right, by yeah, yeah. you know but according to glurp it's awesome here in nice. all of the universe and yeah he's especially into all the 80s stuff um okay. i think that's maybe when he landed here is why but it, it's yeah there's there's a little more to the story that's so, awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Maybe, maybe someday we'll get more to the story, but I wonder yes, if, yes. He, we'll sh- if he's we'll ever hung more out with time. Alf before, you know, that would be cool. Right. I, we, yeah. We love Alf. We watch Alf. So we're definitely a fan. Oh, you do? Alf. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> I haven't seen Alf forever. It's I need crazy. to get back into bad. Alf again. I mean, as far as sitcoms and, you know, with the laugh track go, it's pretty good. Pretty yeah, good, like true. family, true. you know, wholesome entertainment if you've got kids, you know, which we have a little one, so. I know yeah, uh, Glurp is definitely into uh, the Ernest movies, which yes, yes, how could you yes. not be? Because, like, if I have listeners right now, and I'm sure I do that, are like, what's the Ernest movies? What are the Ernest oh, movies? Man, My goodness. Out. Get off your couch, go to Walmart, and buy the $5 DVD where it's Ernest Goes to Camp and uh-huh. Ernest Goes to Jail Combined. And it's uh, the it's the best Saturday night you'll ever have. Yeah, it's so, so good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jim Varney was no, a, nothing nothing really like it. Yeah, nothing like him. You know anymore. 
So over the years, you you said you've had interviews um, in the UFO field. What's what's the most uh, what's the most interesting uh, interview? Let's say if you know someone was going to get into your interviews, what's the one that you yeah. usually say start out with? Oh wow, most interesting. Yeah. I mean, I'm lucky yeah, because I guess one. the nature of this field, it's like everybody's mm -hmm. interesting. <clears throat> I mean, I've never had a boring interview. That's good. That that probably says something. I really, maybe that's, that's always true though. Hopefully you can find something interesting about everybody. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah, and best one though. I love talking. I don't know if it's the best. That's really hard for me to think of the best one. That's a really good question though. <clears throat> excuse me um <laughs> i hope you don't have to edit all that out i could have just like <laughs> muted myself sorry to no, everybody good. listening all these um sounds but yeah i think who i enjoy well I enjoy, like i said no um disrespect to any of my guests mm -hmm. but who i would especially love to have on again soon which would be my third time to interview him would be a man named praveen mohan that's a good and interview. yeah he's yeah. just so interested he i just I'm always curious like what is he gonna share with me next you know what has he found or discovered and so for people don't he don't know um he is i mean essentially a world explorer um and he studies ancient sites and he definitely has the ancient aliens perspective okay. that he brings to things and he's been on ancient aliens and it's just, he's an expert in particular on India, but he has explored all over. And when I talked to him last, he, we, we talked a lot about Cambodia because he was in the oh. middle of um, exploring there. So I think he's an especially fun and interesting person to talk to. But yeah, I mean, I like every, I mean, it's been, that's probably the, I mean, I don't know how you feel about interviewing people. Hopefully it's fun, but no, I love it's, talking it's, to no, people and fun, getting yeah. to know people. And yeah, it's a cool yeah. perk, perk of it I all. I mean, this yeah. is not my, uh, my nine to five, you know? Yeah, you know right. Saying? You have to do this. Like I love uh, exactly. talking. So I primarily talk to people right in the cryptozoology field, but I like spicing it up and kind of, you know, making sure that my listeners get uh, the viewpoints of other uh, fields. There's an episode sure. that'll come out soon with Ryan Sprague in it. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, there, we had some really good, uh, interesting conversations about why um, people in the cryptozoology field should play nice with people in the UFO field, you know? Mm -hmm. Because I think that sometimes there's maybe a line drawn where it's like, well, if you're into Bigfoot and you're into UFOs, then you're crazy, right? Yeah, it's so silly. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I know. To me, that it doesn't make sense. I mean, I understand if you're, for example, I'm not a crypto expert. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I have any fantastic Bigfoot theories or evidence to add. Um, so I don't expect everybody to be an expert or interested in everything. But it is weird how some people or at least that I've come across, maybe, maybe mainly on Twitter, I don't know in real life, um, but that almost like if in the crypto field, almost don't want to associate even with UFO people and or UFO people who don't even want to associate with crypto people or, you know, don't bring up Bigfoot around me kind of thing. Like, or that's so boring to them. And I don't know, to me, it's all, it may or may not be related or connected, but it's, it's all in the same unknown universe yeah, exactly. and i feel like that's why it's interesting to us so it's like it there's obviously like something going on why wouldn't you look into it right yeah or yeah. or at least be glad other people are looking into it and be curious about totally what they're finding totally right so we can share everybody can share mm -hmm. you know what, what we're finding and learn yep, so much exactly. more and yeah. there's there might be pieces from one side that help uh, fit the puzzles on the other side that we're missing, right? You never yeah, know. I would guess there probably are. I mean, mm -hmm. expanding, you know, well beyond Bigfoot and like into thing like things like ghosts and just yeah, other weird totally, yeah. sciences and psychic things like remote viewing things. So I I like to have different people on, you know, our our YouTube channel as well, and it doesn't always it. I usually, honestly, like usually if I have somebody that's really not 
in the UFO cookie cutter. Mm -hmm. I'll probably expect, oh, might get some dislikes or some negative comments or something like that because it's not what people are expecting, you know, or wanting, you know, but it's so important, I think, to expose the UFO community to a lot of different perspectives and yeah. angles and for everybody to start talking to each other more and finding common ground. Definitely. So yeah, I think that's important. So, uh, Jane, what was it that started you down the path earlier in, and got you first interested into UFOs? Do you remember if there was a, a certain thing that led you down that path or what do you think? Yeah, well, a lot of people say, oh, I had a sighting when I was like three years old or my parents were in the military and they always talked about seeing things or I saw fire in the sky or Red Communion or something like that. And it was nothing like that. I was never, I was always open, an open-minded kid, but I, that was never something I got into. But okay. then I met a guy <laughs> who was really into it. <laughs> and so I like because of him, you know, and just, I think though, for anybody though, want, no matter who you are, once you start researching these cases and finding out about this, you can't, you don't like unsee it. You don't like, yeah. you know, it doesn't go back, back in the bag. So I think anybody, once they get into this would find it interesting, you oh, know, totally whether or not. not they make, start making YouTube videos about that, that might be a little more unusual. But so I think, I don't think it was weird that I got into it once I found out about it. I think it's just not out there for most people. So, you know, I didn't grow up, yeah, like reading about it or reading, even with the internet, I had the internet in, yeah, like middle school, okay. right? Yeah. Like. I'm a young, I'm an older millennial, you know, like, <laughs> right. I don't even know but I don't remember. I didn't. Like, yeah. I don't even know. Don't even know. Yeah. yeah. Millennials will sh are still kind of young to me basically, but I'm technically mm -hmm. one, if that makes sense. Um, but they, I'm like that group of millennials. that's annoyed by millennials. Cause okay, I'm so like right in that. So do I you think remember I am? <laughs> when the internet came into your house? Well, because I want to say, I don't know if we were early adopters or not, but I'm trying to think of what my first internet experience was. Do you remember dial up? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. hundred okay. percent. Okay. Oh yeah. Like AOL, oh, AOL instant messenger. Um, okay. All right. So you get, AOL, it. yeah, you get the AOL. AOL um, okay. You got mail. Yeah. But it, yeah, it's, but I don't remember ever reading about you if like seeing any UFO videos or anything. And I know that that was around back then, but I was not part of that early, early wave. I caught the wave okay. probably like 2007 to 2012. Oh, wow. Now I will say, yeah. and of course I, I'm forgetting I'm talking to a crypto group, <laughs> but I think it'd be the same story with maybe Bigfoot. I don't know. I don't know how the Bigfoot evidence, okay. Bigfoot evidence was back on the internet back in the day. <laughs> so um, my story is actually kind of similar. Like I, you know, around that time when the internet came in, I wasn't really like, you know, looking into Bigfoot evidence, like I got into that, uh, the whole cryptozoology thing a lot later in life, um, mm -hmm. really in, um, I would say the last 10 to 15 years ish. Yeah. So yeah, definitely not in, uh, when I was, you know, I'm, I'm about 36. So, you know, that'll tell you. Um, it's been a while since the the dial up modem days, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're, no, we're exact. We're we're totally on the same path with yeah. that. Um, but like, I don't know how it is with Bigfoot or cryptozoology. I would f I feel like it'd be similar with all field with all the fields. But there used to be a lot more UFO footage yeah. and and things uh, to sift through back in the day because this okay. was pre. Think of all the censorship. It's up. It's extraordinary. Uh, totally. um, what's happened with, you know, mm -hmm. how things can disappear so quickly and yep. yeah. And how they don't surface on Google like they used to, or, or just, just flat out won't be on a platform or shadow ban. Like none of that really was happening right. early on. And I knew as a journal, cause I had 
you know, I had a journalism degree. They taught us what happened to paper journalism. Like you're literally taught about propaganda and yellow journalism, oh, wow. you know, University of Texas, Austin, okay. good journalism school. So yeah, I was getting totally. a good education. And I knew I was like, oh, clearly the internet's going to go that way. And so I knew <laughs> that this is a very special time and that it wasn't going to last forever. I don't know why I didn't print out more things, honestly had that oh. thought so much, but it's too much. I don't need it. <laughs> you know, I just, I knew I just needed to download it at the time. And sure enough, I feel that that early being in there early and has prepared me to, <laughs> because right now, I mean, people just don't, I mean, if you're new to UFOs, I mean, this is interesting. Like if you search Texas UFO sightings, okay, like today on Google, this is a newer thing relatively near thing um you know texas ufo sightings.com won't come up for many pages <laughs> um <Wow. laughs> the facebook page will but it, it used to come up because well oh, i mean God. if you want to find recent texas ufo sightings i mean that's really that's where you're going to find it so you know and if you search you know even if you're trying to find like a recent specific case that's you know i've covered you're trying to research it on Google, most likely right now you're going to get page one results of other unrelated mm. sightings that ha just have okay. UFO or, and Google's True. smarter than that. Google's not that dumb. No. So not. Google knows how to get you exactly <laughs> what you're looking for. So if you're not finding what you're looking for, something's going on. And it used to be you could find everything you're looking for. And it was just a, it started out just this like candy store of just could find whatever you wanted um good yeah. bad ugly fake real everything you know and then it just kind of over time it's just like this narrowing you know the things that that you can find in research so and i think we're almost in another type of candy store now because it's like now you have these apps where it's like let's say tiktok for example right. and any joe schmo can put up anything and there's nothing that that tells you like this is a hoax or anything there's no person that's like flagging stuff like or, or uh on the other hand you could have a, a thing like let's talk about the uh the mass what was i don't know it's still so recent what was thought to be a mass ufo sighting in new jersey oh, did yeah. you see this and it's like yeah. now people are saying it was a good good year blimp but if you see the um if you see the videos, because people were just stopped on the highway and everyone's got their phone out and filming what everyone thinks is a UFO. And, uh, you know, there's no one that's like 100 percent expert that can say, like, it was a good year blimp or UFO. But it's just like crazy how like there's that that crowd mentality, like everyone capture this, put it somewhere. They can't stop all of us. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that, that's the thing. I mean, and, and that is one reason why people, some people who don't think that aliens are visiting, that's what they'll say is they'll like, well, you know, if aliens were visiting, why wouldn't we see this clear video? Because it would be so easy for everybody just to get out their phones and film it. But I, there's like a few things I always say back at that, which is, well, one, I mean, you're assuming that there haven't been videos mass sightings and videos that have been taken of you know of aliens so you're assuming that one and, and that's not true you have the phoenix lights you have the washington 1952 incident with ufos literally mm. over the white house oh, yes, um, yeah, that's crazy we have multiple we have countless accounts of of people interacting with actual reportedly alien beings and entities and mm. there are some videos and photos that show this like typical gray that they, they've been debunked however this is a classified topic and so we know for a fact now as of december 2017 when the new york times said hey the yeah. pentagon Ha the ufos are real and the pentagon does investigate them and this is a top secret program so we know for a fact that any any kind of evidence relating to ufos or the alien phenomenon is going to be considered top secret so that means if there was an alien video if i had found an alien mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You know, for example, we try to keep Glurp kind of, you know, under the radar. Oh, so you got if the, You know, That's MIP like, doesn't, yeah. you know, thinks uh-huh. he's in a costume, right? But if I had an actual alien video and the government confiscated and I posted that video to Instagram, you know, under this, this, this world where it's classified, what do you think would happen? Do you think the government would say, oh yeah, that was an alien video? Yeah. No, that would never happen. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. What would happen is you might have articles coming out where somebody says, oh yeah, I ho- hoax that. You might have somebody oh, so- sure, suddenly yeah. is entering the news story that you never heard them referenced before. Um, you might have another video or set of photos show up mysteriously that are fake, but that are an awful lot like the original video oh, yeah, or totally. photo that leaked. Mm-hmm. You, you might with maybe, at, or maybe you have the original Maybe you leak it, but uh, before anybody else does, but with mm. editing or, or things, that, that's what it yeah. would look like. So it would never look like, wow. actually, you know what it would look like? It was a weather balloon. You know, for that, it, what it, if, if aliens and UFOs were a classified topic and people were seeing them and photographing and, and taking videos of them or whatever, um, it would look like things like where you'd have these quick little leaks of, oh, you know, flying saucer crashes at Roswell, and then suddenly it's a weather balloon. That's mm-hmm. what that looks like. Yep. You know, that, and so it doesn't mean that actual aliens from Mars or Venus, I know that's in the, <laughs> in the news lately, that's, are yeah. tra- traveling through space to visit here. We have no idea if that's what's going on. But but that the category of UFO, which now we the government is saying yes, many of government officials are saying they actually do believe to be not man-made and a potential mm-hmm. threat. So if anything in that category, and so that would even potentially in, include any crypto. So anything true. Yeah, um, true. exotic or strange that has no where you know we can't explain you know, even things that really should be fair game for archaeologists and historians and ge- geologists like to debate could be as long as some government agent with a badge can say this is national security concern yeah. this is a risk the entire security of the of the nation they'll, mm-hmm. they'll they can confiscate whatever evidence they want completely legally justifiably and they we can be sure that they would have been doing that all these years oh yeah sure i feel like that's probably been done a few times i I mean the stuff that you see recently i would hope that they're i don't know i mean there's a part of that article and so correct me if i'm wrong but part of that article is like they're investigating um vehicles from off world Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was the quote that's a right. sentence yeah. to really think about for a long time and to say a few times in your head so guys if this is news to you look into it but vehicles that are off world mm-hmm. are you crazy off-world like this is vehicles. big big stuff it is yeah i mean it's just a quote right now so we have right. to go on the word of that person right and that person though was briefing the defense department so, I mean, just the, the very fact that our own Defense Department, mm-hmm. you know, so say I'm a member of the Defense Department, I'm walking around in America in some coffee bar, and I just got told in, in a top secret meeting that we have off-world vehicles. Yeah. You know, and then I'm listening to some somebody argue about UFOs, you know, in the table uh-huh. over for me. You know, so that's the kind of, I think people don't realize there's a whole group of people throughout our whole history, whether you believe in aliens or not, it's, it's irrelevant, that have, that for a fact, absolutely have been part of these groups with secret information deemed the national security risk, okay. you know, relating to what at least they suspect could be ufo Mm. or alien you know evidence um and only they really know you know what they know which is still it's just only so much right 
what is it going to take for like, you know, sometimes I think it's like, what event is it going to take for, for like the white house or the government to be like, okay, like a hundred percent, like it's go time. There are aliens. I mean, is it going to take like a UFO landing on the white house lawn? Yeah. Well, knows, I mean, that's like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what we were getting at a little bit earlier is in 1952, mm-hmm. there were UFOs, you know, over the oh, way. That's house. true. Yeah. Maybe there was an, 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 oh, a man. contact trying to be made. Maybe there has con- been contact made. So what I, I mean, what I would guess, and um, I mean, I have actually multiple videos. I was think I was actually looking into this today, actually in February, 2017. So this mm-hmm. was. So the start of 2017, right? So before December 2017, let's make sure I get my timeline right. <laughs> before the New York Times stuff came out, okay, I made a video saying, "Is ET, you know, or is NASA, you know, preparing to announce ET life?" Because um, they had this really, really big press conference, and it was they weren't saying they had any evidence of ET life. It was really amazing. They were saying, I think they said things like, "It might have been in this press conference, or maybe it was in another one." think it was this one though um we will you know find alien life within the next 20 years Hmm. you know if alien life is real it is ubiquitous meaning it's everywhere and we will find it so that to me okay i don't think that you ever say you're gonna find anything or discover anything (laughs) within the next 20 years if you don't know it exists it's like columbus saying i'm gonna find america within the next 20 years before he ever found America. No, what happens is Columbus would have found, and I know I'm not, I know Columbus didn't really find a, I know that. I'm, That's <laughs> what's fine. a better, what's yeah. a better, like, you no know, one's gonna um, get after you on this, evidence this of that. Format. Just, just yeah. to be clear, yeah, I'm yeah. just making a simple analogy. Right. Let's pretend though Columbus found America, didn't tell anybody about it. Then said, I'm going to find America within the next 20 years. You know, that's what we, I was hearing NASA say back in February 2017. Mm. Interesting. And then, you know, the New York Times article came out and we've had stories about life uh, and possible life on Mars. I did a story about this on the site today okay. and water on Mars for years and years and years. And it just keeps coming out. Oh, there might be water on Mars. There was water on Mars. There's probably water on Mars, probably life on over and over again. Like the, mm. the journalists, for whatever reason, if it's like something going on in there, like a something that every journalist that reports on water on Mars, they never report on any of the other stories. It's like it's the first time ever. Um, same with like there's there's signals in the galaxy. There's signals in that from that planet, from that planet. It never goes anywhere. It's never followed up. There's always signs of life everywhere. It never goes anywhere. But but it does though. Because it keeps building and building, right. and then you've got off-world vehicles, and then you've got UFOs that might be a threat. So now, when you're talking about life on Venus, which is the same story as life on Mars, we found sure. methane gas on Mars. Now we're finding phosphine. What's the word phosphine? I haven't mastered you're, that word yet. I want to say you're close, but I am not going to say something like that. that. I know the Phos- actual something. Word. Yeah. It's not phosphorus. Yeah, yeah. I know it's dangerous. <laughs> um, Phos right? something. It's yeah. a toxic toxic yeah. to humans. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, like smells like garlic apparently, or like rotting you smell fish. Smell garlic and then you're done. <laughs> yeah. Um, so not friendly aliens, but but anyways, it's not the actual aliens that are the gas. Same with the methane gas. The gas <clears throat> is just produced by life. So I believe like decaying organic matter, and we also produce this like in the lab, you know, here on planet. Oh, wow. okay. So it's like an industrial, like it can result from industry. So anyways, we have the methane gas on Mars in addition to the water. So now we got two things. We got gas and water on Mars. It used to be, oh, there used to be water on Mars. Then there was water on Mars maybe today trap. Now there's methane gas on Mars. Now there used to never be life on Venus. Actually, there used to maybe be life on Venus. Wait, Venus. Wait, wait. No, there's actually gas. So... And then, so in the context of UFOs potentially visiting us. So I do think that it will just keep continuing that way. Yeah. And I don't think it will just be a sudden, 
like events. And if there is a sudden event, people will be prepared for it. That makes there, sense. So I know? think that that's happening. Check this out because so I have a, I have a um, young child in the house as well. And so I watch a lot of stuff with him on like Disney or, you know, Roku or whatever. Oh, yeah. I mean, and I the stuff you. that is coming out that is like alien based is nuts. Like you cannot say that. What are some of the like, shows like that um, it's the new Phineas and Ferb movie? OK, yes, yeah, <laughs> we're I'm not like in, aliens. I don't know stuff, it, dude. Yeah, yeah. OK, well, that's cool to know. Yeah, but it's like you think about it. It's like, OK, is the media like trying to just like st crank it, crank it, crank it up like Hey, here's more alien stuff so that eventually it's like once it does happen, Why it's not? not a big deal, right? Either that or it's going to be a huge deal and everyone's going to load up and try to shoot up all the aliens, which would be terrible. Well, that's like the especially with this oh. situation with that the um, UFO and mm -hmm. being a possible blimp. Um, so on one hand, you know, I'm part of this not i'm not i wouldn't i guess i am part of the disclosure movement i literally i do the disclosure hashtag i've been advocating it forever um mm. but my thing is just you know the truth is kind of coming at you no matter what yeah like you can't get away from it you can't escape it um it it's i but there by design there the cover-up is not necessarily this like bad intentioned thing because you don't necessarily want a bunch of people freaking out about a blimp or a Chinese lantern and shooting at it suddenly. No. I mean that we had a much more peace. Like, let's say that that was an alien before. I don't know which world you want to live in the world where your neighbors are shooting up <laughs> at the sky. At, and one time they get an alien. The other times they are getting a, 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 a nighttime skydiver, which looks that's insane really yeah, by the way. Yeah, That's a good point. Um, but the thing is, that's part of why I'm doing like, that's part of, why we have to be honest about it and like my site is ha i know not to do that because because i've decided to research this half mm. of my job more than half of my job is like debunking stuff those are chinese lanterns could that be a military plane um i had somebody write to me that they were using like a laser pointer to like flash at a ufo one time and it made me super nervous I was like, I saw is that, that illegal to do like it yeah right um and uh, i think i don't know he explained something a little bit further of how he was like following um but yeah i don't advocate anything like that so you know no. if you'd been following me all along you, that wouldn't be your reaction you know mm. you'd be you'd either you'd video it you'd take a photo of it um I don't think that you would act irrationally. You might actually be mm. more likely to identify it than somebody who totally new to this and just found out aliens are real. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. That kind of leads into, I have a few questions from um, some followers. And so the first one is, um, so my buddy Greg or at Jedi Imposter, which is a cool name. Love it. <laughs> uh, so he asked, how do you source the questions for your game show? <laughs> so, yeah, so that, I guess that was the game show. Was, I mean, that was the first time we ever did it. We definitely have, I want to do it again, <laughs> but like with the sponsor, because it's fun. And I think I would yeah, need more help cool. sourcing questions. But we did have, I did have like a researcher friend. It kind of helped, you know, with it. But I ended up just going on, yeah, I think I used like one or one or two of her questions, but it's really just from all my research okay. and like everything that I've done because <laughs> I, I am like, anytime I do, like every question I asked was something, you know, I had, I guess, research and mm. researched in depth at one point. Except okay. for the Battle of, of L.A. question, which was a true, like, very factual, like, year yes. question that was easy to verify. Um, if it, It's weird, though, because if I had been writing a game show for, like, say, a topic I wasn't such an expert on, probably mm -hmm. would have actually been easier. But it kind of, like, took me a second because I felt like I was a teacher, like, 
like how hard of questions should I write? <laughs> Cause I could write really, really hard questions, That's you know, if point. I wanted to, but I, Cause like, I but you were so about. good. You were such a trooper. Cause they Jane, totally were UFO. One. No, but they were totally one, UFO Jane. alien questions. So you did great. <laughs> it was fun. Um, it was fun. Being a B- Bigfoot yeah, expert. Yeah. You yeah. did great. Thank you. Um, um, do you have like, uh, do you have go to books that you go to uh, when you're like, oh, I gotta look at this up about UFOs? Like, uh, what's on your bookshelf? How about that? I have so many good books, okay. and I do yeah. scan through them, and I okay. find I I'm a skim reader. Um, what's like your number Asian one uh, favorite book? I'm trying to think of what I've been skimming lately right now. What am I skimming right now? Maybe I'm not skimming anything right now. No, um, but people ask, I love books. Um, my favorite though, more so are old brochures and magazines and files and things like that. That's okay, so more fun for me. And that's actually more in like folders and things like that, but I'll spend much more time on that. Um, but people ask a lot, like, who's your favorite researcher, author? What are your favorite books? Like, or documentaries? But the thing is, is like, um, there's so much to investigate constantly mm-hmm. that I don't really have time. I really don't. Like, yeah. I don't have time to read. Yep. No offense. No offense. Um, but another researcher's, like, perspective necessarily. I have some okay. friends and some core people I really respect. And so I'll follow their work, <laughs> you know, because it's good to get. But outside of that... Um, you know, like Ryan Sprague is somebody I follow very closely. Jeremy mm-hmm. Corbell, somebody that I follow yeah. very closely. Yep, Cause sure. I just happen to, to know these people. I know they're the real deal. So I know I can trust them. So I know if I'm, may, may, I may not always agree with them, but I know if I read something or watch something they do, it's coming from a good place. And so it's not going to, um, but for mm-hmm. the most part, I would rather look at the actual videos and photos and, um, there's so much constant news that it has to constantly be researched. It's so crazy. I'm I'm researching all the time. So if I was reading books, I wouldn't, you know, I'm reading to the extent that I need to research. You know, okay. so I'm reading a lot, but it's sometimes it's CIA, you know, documents or um, trying to find out the history of, you know, how Mars has been reported you know, and that, that really takes up so much time, you know, or witness reports and, um, things like that. It's, it's so time consuming. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So I'm, I'm genuinely, genuinely curious. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna prod a little bit more. What's the number one coolest, uh, print media you have on the bookshelf? Oh my gosh. We have so much. It's like your house is burning. It's not in here in the room right now. So I'm having to picture, we did this really cool show called um, um, Show Us Your Shit. <laughs> Excuse me. Show <laughs> us your... Sorry. I don't know if you'll have to edit that. No, show I won't. Your... Don't worry. Okay. Um, it's it's on. I think it's, it may only, I don't know if it's on, still only on Instagram, Okay. but it's um, this guy and he has people just show like off different stuff. And That's so we got idea. to be on that show. So that was fun. So we were like, sharing all kinds of cool files mm. um one of my say that i mean they're all so good i love reading old stuff because it just doesn't have that modern day yep. censorship feel and i can apply what i know now to back then so anytime mm. i'm reading old old things it's just cool and you just never know what you're going to come across and it could be just a really cool photo of a UFO that you just know you probably would never find on the internet today. And maybe there's not a little green guy in it, but it's a weird looking light. And it's just part of this. We've got old journals from old MUFON investigators. Oh, cool. Okay. That were just like where they found different clippings, you know, from and just collected Mm. or um, things like that. So it's just really cool. But I'll say one of the kind of neater ones that I wish think of what the name is maybe i can message it to you later just so you at least know no but i featured it on my instagram a I, while I was ago gonna say yep you have posted a lot of cool stuff in the past where it's like you go through all old journals yeah and i which i think is awesome do it again yeah, yeah i i've yeah. 
been me. I've been kind of on pause of that because honestly, just a lot of other stuff, but I've been meaning to, to get back into that. And so, um, I will, I will try to do that more. Uh, but one of those files was interesting because, you know, it's like rumored leaked, you know, documents mm -hmm. that I guess had been reprinted mm -hmm. by different journalists. And it's like, you know, who knows, but a lot of the <laughs> stuff in it was Star Trek. Now you can say, okay, this is obviously a hoax. They got stuff from Star Trek, right? Okay. But then other stuff in it, right, you could verify mm. as like related to real classified projects. Okay. So it's like it could just be this fantastical <clears throat> group of files that somebody mm. hoaxed. Uh, but then there's all these other things about it that were so weird and didn't that seem like I think it even ends with all these different codes, like military codes and stuff. And Robo. it has all this official looking, you know, top secret stuff. But then there's actual like um, some specific terms to Star Trek, some that are close. Oh, okay. And so there's this like, of course, I'm more of a I'm more of a Star Wars expert, and so I <laughs> yeah, believe, and I um, will say the Force is real, and I'll put it in the hashtag. And I mean, I really basically believe in that. I mean, I think the basic writers of Star Wars were taking all the great religions and science and everything and they were just putting it into this you know this idea right of the force sure. and you know good and and evil and opposites and right balance it just makes sense um so i'm really more of a star wars person so i tend to look to star wars for those little cues and like you're saying like with disney and they've got star wars space resort essentially which you yeah, can yeah, uh, yeah, basically if feel like you're living in space Mm -hmm. So, you know, NASA has been making Mars colonization posters for a long time now, really um, I think since 2012. And so you've got, of course, Disney would want to help us get comfortable in space and make it seem like it's some fun, you know, oh, vacation. So but I assure yeah, you, you're probably yeah. going to get depressed looking out into um, the black sky for that long. <laughs> it's pro probably need to make it kind of a resort. So I feel like that's what that could be. But so I've always looked at that to digress. But this here, these files are like all Star Trek. Okay. And I don't, Star Trek's, you know, that's the Borg, right? And um, so that's like a really, Star Wars or Star Trek are very different, but very similar. Um. And Gene Roddenberry, who, you know, Star Trek. Right. Uh, yeah. I don't know how familiar uh, you are with Star Trek. Star Trek, is that right? Yeah, right. He was in the military before. Oh, he was? And I, he I, crashed I, in oh. the military. Like, he was involved in a few plane crashes. And he actually oh, no. was a plane crash investigator. Oh, no. During the 40s. Don't say Come on, Gene. And guess no what? Way. We know for a fact that UFOs oh, no. were classified and that they would have been investigated by people at crash sites, right? Oh, no. But, I mean, you'll see that a lot. I mean, oh. the creator of James Bond, he actually worked in the military and sourced from real spy stories. And so there's, wow. you know, yeah. art it imitates fiction, fiction, you know, like that's mm -hmm. always there. Uh, but there's some, you know, I'm fascinated a bit with Gene Roddenberry and where he was inspired from and, you know, knowing everything we know. Mm -hmm. And because there have to be some, you know, I mean, for those who don't know Close Encounters uh, of the Third Kind, um, great movie, Steven yep. Spielberg movie. Yep. Um, we can guess Spielberg is a big believer. There's some, you know, funny quotes he said you know along the way but um j allen hynek mm -hmm. who is the father of considered the father of ufology and who was right. part of project blue book that investigated ufos he consulted mm -hmm. on that movie you know so oh, okay. and was actually had a cameo in it um and mm -hmm. and yeah so there's a lot you know and that that's actually why um 
if it's okay, I'll give like a quick shout out. We're, we have a new podcast called yeah, Weird so Hollywood. Don't <laughs> and worry, that's that, the idea that's of it. Eventually, but yeah, go ahead and yeah. do whatever you want. Yeah. No, no. I mean, that. it's just that. I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, that's okay. the whole inspiration behind it is that there's all this truth seemingly in a lot of the mm-hmm. movies and shows we watch. And it's like how much of that was placed there. I like that. You, okay. you know, and so that's yeah. actually the whole idea. It's just we were trying to like hmm. figure out, yeah, are, are we being prepared or? Okay. So yeah. you're analyzing each one of these, like, and it can be anything from, um, really. I mean, you've done uh, comedies, right? But you've mm-hmm. also you've done, done cone heads stuff. And yeah. yeah. This is the end recently, which is, I forgot how funny that one was with oh, Seth yeah, Rogen. Mm-hmm. Um, and then some things we find don't end up having that a lot of of that in it. But then some things like like we watched Stargate. Um mm. and it was just packed with just like, you know, ancient alien stuff, but oh, but a lot terrible. of things that um kind of were there's more truth to it, you know that we know now, you know mm-hmm. even then. Oh, um so even some of uh, you know, I mean even I can't wait to watch Indiana Jones. That'll be a fun one. Um, okay, so. Yeah, I mean, it's endless. Yeah. You're talking about Crystal Skull, right? Well, yeah, I mean, that's what, well, I that's mean, the, the skulls one. and, I mean, kind of all of it. You know, the, the sacrifices and um, just the, the magic yeah. voodoo stuff and that, that, um that we grow up like seeing in movies as kids and mm-hmm. just thinking is so fictional, so pretend. And it's like, how much is it? Yeah, like That's maybe Indiana point. Jones's yeah. reflexes, you know, and getting away, hmm. you know, and the lasso part, but the actual things he's uncovering, it, how, how it, it seems like it could be related to some sort of, um forgotten history and then you know for me of course i'm always gonna look at the alien angle do you think the next indiana jones ever is actually gonna come i come out i don't think it'll actually come out because he's he's getting they keep pushing it back have you seen how they're gonna come out with another one eventually i mean i'd heard about it yeah i don't know if it'll happen though i i mean i'll take whatever indiana jones stuff i can get but because it would be like a new Indiana Jones, though, right? And no, it'd be Harrison Ford still. Oh, he's so he's really old, Jane. Like, yeah, I think I just assumed. <laughs> how long ago did I Crystal he Skull would be come in it, out? But he wouldn't be like, um, you know, like the wiser man. Like, yeah, I thought maybe they'd have like. I mean, they kind of already did that. I know that with you know River Phoenix. But I, that's what I was kind of thinking. It would be like the next Indiana Jones. Right. Yeah. Okay. A lot of people but, were saying you know. like they're going to reboot it with Chris Pratt. That was the rumor, but that did not come into fruition. I guess that makes sense, but it yeah. just kind of feels up. like it's too much like his Jurassic Park look. Oh, snap. That's I a feel like. Point. Yeah. Right. But maybe yeah, that's yeah, 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 the yeah. point, right? Like maybe it's the best transition. Yeah, I'd like to see it. I mean, I want all the movies to come back. And they're they're slowly, slowly coming back, trickling back. Mandalorian, we're talking about space oh, stuff. Man. The show is... Season 2 trailer. Did you watch so. it? Yes. Oh, so. so good. Super excited. It was really good. Yeah. Oh, man. I got uh, Sorry, I got a second question. I need to make sure oh, I yeah. get this in. No, I'm so sorry. I'm, like, getting uh, us all off the... No, this is, ex- this is <laughs> why... I- okay so jane here's the thing this is what the podcast is it kind of like it's getting uh so the way i look at it is it getting people to talk about stuff that they would not normally talk about on interviews okay good 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 that's kind of you know <laughs> so it works out so like stuff like talking about indiana jones right okay cool okay yeah. so my buddy moth boy matt from the moth boys podcast Sweet. it's a great podcast if you're into cryptids um it says uh, so number one you are amazing so, oh, thank you. Hats off to you. And he loves your show. Hats off again. Thank uh, you. He says, uh, where's Glurp from? 
I know. So I he's before. like really mysterious and he won't tell okay. me. But that's true. Mm. I, he just he he keeps his secrets and I don't I don't know if he's trying to protect me so like the government can't get out of me or something. That makes sense. Um, but I've been talking to him about it and I think he needs to just like in the nature of disclosure and everything mm-hmm. be a part mm-hmm. of that. And so I think I like it. Yeah. we're gonna start like giving different like information over time mm. and so maybe we could start with that you know with the home it's planet but i'll see if i can figure that out um but yeah but he likes earth though so he's here yeah. now so maybe glurp is the event that finally sets everything off could you imagine that would be I, that would bad. be i think that would be an oak i think if that's how it sets everything off we're probably mm-hmm. in for a good time <laughs> yeah, we're, we're in for a good time. We're in for a lot of earnest movies <laughs> right. all over the place. <laughs> it's like broadcast, like mm-hmm. you can't do anything about it. <laughs> yeah, to every TV. That's the invasion. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um. Oh. Uh, uh. So you went to the Storm Area Fifty One thing, right? Yeah. What was that like? I want to hear. So. I've always wanted to hear about that from a person who was actually there. What was that yeah. like? It was awesome. Yeah, that's now I had never been before though. A lot of people okay. had gone, yeah, you know, I like just talked to UFO bros. They'd been multiple times, um, like back in the day when like you really were not supposed to go kind of right. thing and nobody right. you know. Um, so when I went, it was of course part of the storm area fifty one. Thing, but it wasn't part of the storming the gates thing. Like I would never. I actually, we actually made a whole video before this saying, "Don't storm Area 51." Mm, nice. <laughs> no, we don't <laughs> advocate illegal activity or doing dangerous things. Um, but because of all that publicity, basically there ended up being all these peaceful events put on instead. And Jeremy Corbell put on something called Area 50. Well, he helped put on something mm-hmm. called Area. Uh, 51 base camp invited me to come out so I but I didn't you know I didn't know if it it could be dangerous it could be crazy we didn't know but it was so like there were um you know security lots of security and stuff like that but it was all super relaxed and chill Mm -hmm. and the event itself was not like um unlike a music festival or oh, alien con okay. you know or something yeah, like yeah. that but it was you know outside um the numbers weren't huge you know like um the millions <laughs> <laughs> like had been in the news but it was like a good turnout and then okay. around the um so you have the actual gates which are here you know mm-hmm. somewhere here i'm not geography i'm not right. saying actual if you're just listening, I'm waving my hands around. But the gates, you know, are far away from the actual event. And then you have the whole area. Of, oh, shoot. What's that town? Rachel, Nevada. Okay. These little towns around there that have like um, an alien, the Alien Inn, which is an alien themed hotel. Course, yeah. That's always been. It was, you had basically a bunch of hippies out there just um, hanging out with tents and. Nice um chairs just drinking and like and so there were it was just good vibes everywhere and so nobody was misbehaving or anything like that or um it was just the people out in that um it seemed like the people that were at the event were a little more aware about ufos already mm. okay. <clears throat> right um whereas the people who were like kind of out in the city maybe were into it but they didn't necessarily they don't necessarily know about some of like things, some of the facts that we've been sharing, like in this podcast. So they seemed maybe they'd always believed in aliens their whole life, but I don't know that they'd necessarily really researched it. So that was a lot of the, you know, um, activity there. But what was really cool is you could drive up to the gate, like it was welcoming, and like you could go take pictures. Um, by the gate, like with the security officers, technically, I guess, like around. Um, oh, wow. And yeah, I mean, I don't know that anybody was posing with them, but they were just like in good spirits. It's like they might as well have been. Um, and they even wanted mm-hmm. to talk about their UFO sightings and things like that. And then mm. so people were just driving up and down, like, you know, so that was the vibe. 
Um, and it was really fun and it, it definitely was, I mean, the timing of it was incredible. If you think of all the news stories that have come out since yeah, totally. it really was yeah. like the start of something. And I think it I helped to kickstart things. And I think there was definitely the hope that it would happen again this year, but of course, you know, with everything right. going on in the world, especially that, that part of the, oh my mm -hmm. gosh, country right now. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so we'll see, hopefully something like that, there will be some other kind of area 51 event. And cause I would definitely recommend right. people come out. It's pretty cool. And the desert's so pretty and it's got this big sky and you definitely have a chance of seeing something. That's um, awesome. For sure. There's no light awesome. pollution. Yeah. I think this has been a very good conversation tonight. Thank you. Um, if I have, um, let's say if I have people that are listening to this and they want to make sure that they keep up to date uh, with you, what are different ways that they can do that, Jane? Yeah. So as you're saying, UFO Janet X, or yeah. UFO, UFO Jane Janet TX, TX. <laughs> TX for Texas technically is what <laughs> it is. Um, so that I'm on, on Instagram, I'm on Twitter, Facebook. Okay. I mean, YouTube, you can search UFO Jane or the handles, Texas UFO sightings, mm -hmm. um, Texas UFO sightings.com. But usually you can find me from one of those places. So I'm like okay. in way too many places, <laughs> uh, gotcha. but definitely let me know if you've ever seen anything. Um, we're welcome to report your sighting to me. I do look into cases and report on them. So, um, yeah. Nice. Thanks for having me on. This was really, really fun. Yeah, you got it. You got it. Uh, and, uh, listeners, we are going to, of course, uh, Jane has agreed to stay on a, a few extra minutes and share some extra stories for, uh, the supporters of the Patreon, um, uh, which you can go to bigfootsocietypodcast.com and then click on the Patreon button. It's $5 a month, but helps us keep, keep the lights on. But thanks again for coming on, Jane. Yeah, thank you. This was so much fun. I hope we can do it again. Awesome. All right. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you guys next week. Have a good one.